Hey, this is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm working on my wife's 98 Ford Mustang. So recently my wife went and got gas, and she pressed the odometer reset button, at which point it went to zero. However, after that, the odometer stopped working. It's about 500 miles short right now. So while I'm working on my wife's 98 Ford Mustang, this fix also applies to 94 to 98 Ford Explorer, F-150, F-250, obviously Mustang, Ranger, Taurus, and the Mercury Sable. The problem is, is that inside the instrument cluster, there's some plastic gears that control the uh, rotation of the odometer. And they tend to get brittle and crack with age and, and just basically disintegrate. So the fix is to replace those gears. So the first thing we need to do is remove the bezel around the outer edge of the instrument cluster. So to get the bezel off, first thing you need to do is remove the headlight switch right here. So the trick to this is you pull it out and rotate it until you see a little slot right here. So inside that slot, there's a little metal tab right here. You want to push this outward this way towards the driver's seat. That will release the spring pressure holding the plastic knob onto the, its metal shaft. So you take your small screwdriver, you pry it into a little slot, release the spring pressure. I'm going to try to not, do, not block the camera and then just pull. Okay, now you need to remove the two screws holding the bezel in. To give yourself a little bit more access, it might be advisable to lower the steering wheel down a little bit so then you can get in here a little bit easier. These are seven millimeter uh, bolts. So once you've got those bolts removed, the only thing holding this bezel on are two tabs down here and two tabs around in here. So what you do is you get a plastic trim tool or if you're like me and you can't find yours, a uh, plastic kitchen spatula and stick it in the top here and work your way towards the right and pry out and do the same on the left and pry out they'll just pop right off then once you have that undone then you can just pull the bezel all the way out now there are four seven millimeter slash t20 torx bit bolts one here one here, one here, and one right there. I'm not sure if you can really see that or not. You undo those bolts and the cluster will come out. So now that you got those bolts out, what you wanna do is you wanna tilt the instrument cluster like this so the bottom comes out towards you and then pull it out. Like that. So you have one cable there. There's a little latch on the far side that you depress and then you pull the cable out. On the left side, there's another connector that you need to remove as well. So it's a little hard for me to show disconnecting those connectors with the camera with just two hands. So I'm just gonna do it. And there you go. And there's our prize. Okay, so now we have the instrument cluster on the workbench. So before we go any further, you wanna take note of all these needles and their positions so that you can get them back in the same spot when you put everything back together again. One way of doing that is just by taking a picture or in my case, doing a video. So once you have all that done, next you wanna remove the eight small bolts that hold the front of this bezel on. A 738 second socket will fit. It'll be a little bit loose, but it'll fit. But you can also use a T15 Torx bit, which will fit perfectly. So that's what I'm gonna use. Okay, once you have all the bolts undone, you just lift straight up and remove the front bezel. Next, you want to remove the two side instrument panels. They're just being held in by the electrical pins for the stepper motors behind these two dials. So you just basically take a small screwdriver and just lightly pry up like that and remove it. So these pins were all that were holding it in place into those sockets right here. You do that on both sides. Okay, once you have that done, the only thing holding the center on is this one small bolt. It's also a T15 or a small socket. So once you have that bolt out, then you just lift straight up and it'll come right out. So now that you have it out, you need to flip it over. You wanna be careful and not bend these plastic tabs here and here. You also don't want to damage the needles or the face of your speedometer and tachometer. 
So just set a towel down and flip your piece over. So here's your trip meter and its gears, and here's your odometer. This cog right here is what rotates the odometer. This motor is what spins when the computer tells it to move based on the speed sensor, and it spins a worm gear that's down in here, you can barely see it, it's a little white thing, that rotates this gear, which then rotates this gear, which then rotates these numbers. So that's basically how the odometer works. So the gears that we'll be replacing is this gear right here and the worm gear itself. So the first thing we need to do is remove this motor right here. It's held on by a tab right here and an, uh, an equal one on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the nail from my middle finger and pry up on the far tab. I'm then going to use my thumb and index finger to rotate the motor clockwise. I'm also going to use a small screwdriver to pry up on this uh, near tab. Like that. And now the motor is out. So there are a bunch of different failure points in this gear system, primarily because it's plastic. So you have a plastic worm gear that could be shredded or broken or whatever, or the gear inside here could be disintegrated and breaking. In my case, this gear is all sorts of chewed up, which means the worm gear couldn't, win. even though the worm gear was spinning, this gear was not, which was what was making my odometer not move. So you might get lucky and be able to pull this little gear out with a uh, pair of needle nose pliers or a screwdriver or some, pry it out with a screwdriver or something like that. In my case, I'm just going to use a 90 degree hook pick and just put it behind it and pull up. So you can see in my case, the gear is all sorts of chewed up and even the pivot point on this side is broken. Although that could have happened while I was removing this uh, gear. So next you want to go in and remove any of the little bits and, of plastic that you might find like that. If you're lucky there's some grease in there that might help make things stick to whatever it is that you're trying to use to pry with. So just inspect all the way all the way in here and make sure you get out all the bits. You don't want an, uh, an old piece of plastic getting in the gears and chewing them up again making you have to do this job all the way over again. Next you need to take the worm gear off so you just take a small screwdriver and pry up on it until it comes out. It'll be a tight fit. Now you get your replacement gears. The manufacturer is Standard Motor Products. The part number is C82001. Rock Auto lists them as a speedometer drive gear, even though they work for the odometer. So now you need to press on the worm gear onto the motor. This is going to be a very tight fit, so you want as much help as you can get. What I like to do is I like to put a little bit of silicone lube in the little hole right there. You don't need a lot. And then press on the gear. Rotating it as you go down. You don't want to press the worm gear on all the way. You want to have it a little bit raised up off the base of the motor so you don't have any friction there. You want the worm gear to spin freely. About the thickness of the tip of a screwdriver. Just as long as the gear itself is not coming in contact with the motor, you should be fine. So now you take your new gear and drop it into place, making sure when you press down that you're not pressing down on the pins on the back. So you want to support the face of the speedometer as you press down and it'll pop right into place. Okay, once you got the gear in place, now's your opportunity to fix your odometer as far as the number, number of miles on it. If you rotate the gear upwards like this, it will slowly advance the mileage. If you rotate it the opposite direction, it won't do anything, it'll just click. So no, you can't roll your odometer backwards. So just keep rolling it forwards and hopefully you know how many miles your odometer is off so you can reset it back to where it should be. In my case it's 500 miles so I'm going to be doing this a while. Now if I had the time I'd figure out what signals went to this motor and, and make the motor do it for me. However I just don't have the time and there's also no schematic for this uh, system so I'd literally have to back probe the whole thing and pretty much figure out, this, figure out the schematic myself and that's longer than it would probably take me to roll this back on my own. I rotated mine around about 535 miles which is a rough estimate of how many miles this odometer is low. 
Uh, so now I should be back to close to what the odometer should be. Next you take the worm gear and put it in its bore. Just like that. And once you have it in place, you rotate it to lock it in place. So while you have everything apart, now's the perfect time to check out all the lights that are in here and up here and making sure that they're all in good condition. If you see any that are bad, obviously replace them. You can pick them up at most auto parts stores fairly cheaply. So if you see any corrosion on these contacts or on the pins themselves, you should take a little bit of fine sandpaper and remove any of the rust or corrosion that's on them. Then what you also should do is take a little bit of dielectric grease. You can pick this up at most auto parts stores and put a little dab in each contact like that right here. You don't need a lot just a little dab will do you. So then when you put everything back together again the dielectric grease will coat over the pins on the back and it will help prevent any future corrosion from forming. It's just a little good preventative measure especially if you live in high salt areas like near the ocean or if you live in the rust belt. So once you've got that done you just take the center speedometer and tachometer and place them and press down. Then you do the same thing for the temperature and fuel gauge. and oil and battery levels. Making sure to press all the way down. Now you also want to make sure that your needles are back in the same positions they were before. The motors that spin these are not stepper motors so they're not geared. They're just straight spinning so if you move this over here the fuel gauge is going to be off. So you need to um, you need to make sure that they're in the right spot for when they were when you took them off. Put the bolt back in just snug them down, don't put too much torque on them because they're going into plastic, you'll strip them out. Now if you got any fingerprints or anything like that on your gauges, you might want to wipe them off now with a uh, damp cloth. You don't want to have it dripping because you don't want to uh, get water inside the instrument cluster. Now you take the top bezel and put it in place. And screw all the bolts back in. So now just putting everything back together again is pretty much the reverse of taking it apart. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe.